Welcome back to Breakout. Uh, this time we break out some more code. Oh, I just made that pun up. That was terrible. Uh, yeah. Uh, this week we are going to look at scoring systems. So when you hit a brick or when the, the ball hits the paddle, you get a score increase. When you miss, you lose a life. So all of that happens, of course, after the fade. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the lives up here and the score over here. And in order to do that, we are going to add a GUI, or GUI, or Graphic User Interface, or HUD, which is a heads-up display. You've seen it a thousand times before, but we're going to do one in Unity, just using the, the built-in toolset. Now we could put it, we could use the, the, uh, the GUI layer, but I'm going to use the new UI tools that, that Unity provides because they're actually really, really good. And if you haven't had a chance to use them yet, then go ahead and use them. Okay, so I'm going to add uh, a piece of text here. Uh, now you'll notice that all of a sudden I get this extra bit here. And this is the, the sort of main view because uh, the default is, if I just scroll really, really far out, the default is that the canvas is what's called screen space overlay. And what that means is that it's overlaid onto the, the graphic screen. Now you can, there's another couple of options here. You can choose to put it into world space or you can choose to put it into screen space camera. We're going to leave it as a screen space overlay. We're not going to worry too much about it, uh, but we do need to change where that text is. Now text is down here. For those of you who haven't used the, the, the 2D um, tools, there is a link uh, up that way, up there. Uh, there's a link up there somewhere. I'll put a link in there anyway uh, to my 2D tutorial. Um, which shows you how to use the buttons and things, but we are going to be using our text button here. So um, you'll notice that it's really, really small. We're going to sort that in just a second here. It's good, actually it's going to make it even smaller in just a second. So uh, if you click on Canvas and go over here, and you'll see that we have our Canvas render mode, which is our screen space overlay. Now I'm going to turn things off just now just to zoom in. So I think if I do small webcam and then turn off the webcam and turn off that guy as well. Okay, because I want to, to be able to zoom in on this. You don't need to see me for this bit here. So over here I have our canvas S, which is a screen space overlay. I'm going to change the UI scale mode to scale with screen size and then it gives me a cho it gives me this option for reference resolution. We are going to choose 1920 by 1080 because it keeps things a little bit easier for us. And then it says match width or height and we're going to change that to 0 0.5. Now, I'm not going to go into the explanation of it for in this video. I will in another video, but just for now that's good enough settings that we have. Um, the next thing I need to, to change is if I click on the text now, you'll see that it is super tiny. Uh, but this is the size of the screen that we have here. So we really want to make this text as big as possible. So over here uh, in the inspector, you'll see that you've got your text script. Uh, we're going to change that to score and then just zero at the end there because obviously the score just now is zero. Uh, it still doesn't make it very big, so we're going to try and make that as big as possible. So right now that's 72. Uh, let's go as far as 84. Now we may have to resize bits and pieces here, so uh, if you just scroll this out to, to the middle part, you see that it snaps to um, the middle part there as soon as we get there. That's great. Uh, there's also this thing down here called the anchor. We want to anchor that to the top here. So when Unity, um, when Unity um, um, scales the screen for us, we want to get this to move relative to the top left up here. So in order to do that, we specify the anchor to be top left. So just click on that little graphic here and then choose top left and then close it. And you see that the anchor points have now moved over to here. 
that's great. So that score is pretty much done. The only thing we should probably do is change the color. I'm going to change that to white. Um, and we could probably make it bold as well. So now we have our score over here. We're going to have lives over here. So the easiest way to do it is go back into our canvas and we'll rename this just now. We'll call this score. And we will press control D. And that creates a duplicate of our game object. And we're going to rename this lives. And then go back to our viewport and just drag that out. Now we want our lives to be aligned to this side here. So we're going to change the text of it. So we go back over to our inspector. Uh, actually we'll do zero lives. We'll do that way round. And we want to align it over here. So we go down to our alignment tool and we choose right align. So we just click on there and it should, uh, should just do work for us. Okay, so now we have our GUI and what that looks like in game, if I click on the game tab, you see that we now have our score and our lives at the very top there. And when we run the game, you see that they're actually overlaid uh, on top of the actual game itself. So although um, in the scene uh, it appears that, that everything is really, really big, you see that this is our this is our actual play area down here is just this part here. The actual UI, if I scroll way way back out again, uh, you'll see that it is massive uh, compared to the actual play area. Uh, it does actually over overlay correctly. So that's all we're going to do for the UI. We only have two items of UI. Um, well, actually, we're going to have one for game over as well, but we're not going to have time to do that one today. Uh, we will do that one next week. So this is only concerning with um, with the um, with the actual in-game UI. So we're going to have a score of zero, zero lives, and we're going to change that when we uh, add some code to the game. So let's do that right now. All right. So we are going to create a blank game object here, and we are going to call this game controller. And this is going to contain the logic for our game. Um, and I'm going to go down to script here and create a new C sharp script. And I'm going to call this game controller. And the game controller is actually going to contain all the information about the player, what score it is, all that kind of stuff. And when the score changes, we are going to update this here. So I will go to open this up. I really do need to change these things. Okay, uh, so I want to create two, two member fields that are going to be private and we're going to use properties uh, to manipulate these things. So um, I need to create two private member fields, one for lives and one for score. So, well, we don't need the private keyboard, we can just use this. So, int lives, int score. Uh, lives is going to default to 3, and score obviously defaults to, to 0. Uh, I also need a couple of public, public pr uh, sorry, public member fields for the text. So, I do public text. And you see that the text is not actually one of the, the options in the, the pull down list there. Uh, I'm going to sort that out in just a second. So public text and I'm going to call this score text and do another one for lives text. Uh, and you see that these are not available. Uh, you can go over here and choose right click quick action uh, if you're running Visual Studio 20. 15, uh, or both, you can actually just do control, if you put the, the cursor inside there, and then do control dot, so control full stop, and then you want to add this here, which is using Unity Engine UI. So click on that, and it will add the relevant namespace up there. So I'm going to refer these to 
our score text and our lives text. Uh, we don't need start and update. Um, Well, no, we do need start. We do need start. But we don't need update because all our update for this is actually going to go inside the properties that we are going to change. Uh, we're going to create, in fact, before we change them. Because we have to create them before we change them. That's the rules. We have to create things and then we change them and then everybody's happy. And Sorry, I made a mistake. Okay, right. Uh, so our start is all it's going to do is score text actually uh, let's do update um, UI let's just create a method here called update UI and all we're going to do is we're going to do score text now score text is uh, of type text so it has a text property and we're going to use our string format function and that is going to be um, four. And then our lives format is going to be lives text text equals string dot format. Okay. So when we change things, we're just going to call this function here. I know it's kind of redundant. We don't need to update score and text at the same time, but eh, what the heck. Um, <clears throat> so our score text is going to be um, formatted to be score, colon, and then whatever the, the score is. This is the, the placeholder, format placeholder. Uh, I will share a link in the show notes, show notes, the video description Sorry, show notes. Uh, the video description below uh, to point to Steve X's uh, excellent uh, C, C Sharp string formatting help. Uh, I use it all the time. It is a fantastic, absolutely brilliant, uh, brilliantly good res uh, resource for C Sharp programmers, um, especially if you don't use this sort of stuff day in and day out. It's fantastic. It will be linked down below. So props to Steve X. Okay, um, so our public properties, uh, like I said, this is going to be a very, very simple game controller. Uh, all we're going to do for now, anyway, is have a couple of public properties for our lives and our score. And when those change, we just call update UI, and that's all it is. So we don't need, we don't really need a get, um, get text. Uh, well, actually, no, we do need get. So. Just ignore that bit. Okay, so we need to create two public properties, one for lives, one for score. So, so public int lives, the get property is very easy. You just return lives. The set one is a little bit more complicated. So we should say lives equals um, value, sorry, update UI. So that's all we need to do for that. And then the same thing for score as well. So we set score equals value update UI. Okay. So I think that is us for our game controller. Let's just review this. So we have our two public, sorry, our two private fields, lives and score. We have two public fields to point to the UI elements that we created in the, the, the previous step. We have our lives and our score public properties that get the number of lives, set the number of lives, update the UI, get the score, set the score, update the UI, and then our start, all it does is it just updates the UI. Sounds good. Okay. Um, so now we need to change ball, because remember ball is really the thing that, that interacts with uh, this game here. So, well, yeah, let's let's add the, the script to game controller first of all. So go over to our add component here and then choose game controller 
and it'll be in the drop down list. If that's not in the drop down list, by the way, it means that you've got a compile error. Check your code, make sure it's, it's exactly the same as here. I will put it up here. Um, I'll close this down so we get some more views. Uh, pause the video now, have a look at that, and it should be exactly as written there for the game controller. Okay. Oops. Okay, so going back over to here, click on game controller, add component, and game controller should be there. And again, if it's not, check the spelling. Uh, you see that we have score text and lives text are public fields. We just need to drag our score onto our score text and our lives onto our lives text. And that's as we're done setting up the game controller object. The next thing we need to do is go back into code and our move ball uh, is where we're going to to interact with things. So when the ball hits a wall, well, when the ball, well, when the ball hits something, like if it hits the paddle, then we increase the score by five. When the um, the ball hits a, a brick, we'll increase it by ten. And when they miss a ball, then the score, the the players' lives will decrease. So in order to do that, we need to have a reference to our game controller. So underneath our audio clips here, I'll just zoom in a little bit, we are going to create a public game controller, game controller member field. And this is what we're going to use to reference the score. So when we go down to here, uh, we are going to go to collision enter and it says if it's not the player destroy brick so this is where we add to our score so we do game controller dot score uh, and then we're going to add 10 to that because every time you hit the brick then you get 10 points and every time you hit the paddle we're going to add 5 to that so game controller dot score plus equals five. Now, this is the, the shorthand form of doing things, plus equals. It is just as good if you can do game controller dot score equals game controller dot score plus five. It's exactly the same thing. It's just it's that this one here is a short form of this one here. Whichever one you're comfortable with, I'm gonna use this one, but you're more than welcome to use the other ones there. So that's great. Uh, if, however, the player doesn't hit anything, that's on here. So this is their player clip missed. So this is when the player misses. So in that case, we are going to decrease the player's lives. So in our on collision, when we hit something, when we hit a brick or we hit the paddle, our score increases. And likewise, when we miss something, our, our lives decrease. So we do game controller dot lives minus minus. And that's it. That is all the code we write for that. So when we go back over to here, we need to wire that up. So we have our game controller uh, and we have our ball. And you see that uh, ball has a missing game controller here. So we just drag game controller over onto here. Make sure we save the scene, and now when we run this, we should have a fully functioning score-wise and lives-wise um, breakout. Okay, so when the ball hits the paddle, we should score five. And likewise, when we hit a brick, we should score 10. So let's see what happens. Yay, here we go. Now let's miss. There we go, and we've lost a life. Oh, we're down to the one life. Well, there you have it. We have scores, we have lives. Um, yeah, 
so it's uh, it's coming together. Uh, next time we're obviously going to to deal with the end game situation. What happens when you finally run out of all your lives? So yeah, um, thanks so much for watching, and and uh, until next time, um, stay safe. Thanks. <laughs>